Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be, and welcome to an extra interview of Final Cut. Today, I'm joined by a gentleman who has officially joined the Hallmark Christmas stable. Ladies and gentlemen, David Attar. Hello. How are you, sir? I'm great. How are you doing today? I'm not too bad. Thank you very much, sir. So, Excellent. firstly, how does it feel to join Hallmark? Uh, it's great. Um, I... I've been an actor here. Uh, I'm located in Vancouver and Hallmark is, you know, a staple in the industry here. And for throughout my twenties and most of my thirties, I was just not really right for it. So now that I'm in the mix and kind of got that little bit of gray, a little bit of, you know, uh, getting older a bit, uh, fitting into these roles, they've, uh, they've been a lot of fun to play and um, I seem to keep bringing me back this year. So, uh, you know, hopefully more of that next year too. You must be the Christmas spirit that keeps on giving. Yes, I'm. I'm absolutely for twelve months of giving. I, I'm. I love that. Not like Michael Bublé, who goes into hibernation for eleven years and then comes out specifically for Christmas. Well, does he goes eleven years or eleven months? Eleven months. Eleven months. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's. Uh, he's. <laughs> no, he's. Uh, he's a hallmark of to to say of, of Christmas. So. Um, and also a Vancouverite, and uh, I've had the pleasure of meeting him a few times, actually, um, was, funny enough, once invited to his family Christmas party. Uh, when I first started acting, uh, I was very good friends with his sister, Crystal, and she invited me, and it was a really icy day, and it was going to be tough to get there, and I passed, and I shouldn't have, because uh, I think that would have been a lot of fun. It probably would have. You know, Buble would have just sang, I haven't, he would have sang to his wife, he would have gone, I just haven't met you yet. That's right. And at the time, he hadn't. So it was a while ago. <laughs> um, you just had a fabled Christmas come out on Hallmark. So congratulations, sir. Thank you. Um, how does it feel to finally have it out? It's great. Um, I was just uh, speaking with Ruby, the director. Uh, we had her and her husband, Terry, over for dinner, uh, Carmel and I. And Carmel's my partner, who also plays my partner in the movie. So a little bit of real life and Hallmark life coming together. The art um, and taste of life. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, and funny enough, we, the, the production didn't know we were boyfriend and girlfriend at the time until oh. we got on set and they realized, ta-da, wow, that was great casting. So uh, that was nice. And um, apparently it just screened at a festival uh, a hallmark festival in chicago in front of a theater full of people and it uh it went really really well there were laughs where there should be and tears where there should be so um it was exciting to to hear that uh it was it was well received always always a uh, good sign when it's been well received and you're like yeah. yes one part of it's over um <laughs> so what is the plot of a movie about uh, it's about a magical inn where people who have lost their way in life have a kind of a last chance to find themselves again. And I play a husband who's become uh, detached from his wife and they have to leave their brownstone home in, uh, in, in um, New York because of a flood that I, I may or may not have caused. And uh, they, they find their way to this inn and reconnect. Yes. So where does your character fit into things as far as uh, Brooke? I'm going to probably butcher her name, so I do apologize to her if you see it. Uh, Brooke Dorsey, Talia, and Ryan Pavies Anderson go. Um, so Brooke and Ryan know each other from childhood, uh, but they haven't seen each other in a very long time, and they're both in pivotal uh, moments of their lives. And they bump into each other at Brooke's bookstore, and then it looks like both of them are going to spend Christmas alone. And lo and behold, as the universe would work out, they find each other at this magical inn and uh, and fall in love. It's a Christmas miracle, you could say. It's also a Hallmark miracle. It is indeed. <laughs> um, what was it like working with the rest of the cast? If you want to include nice... your wife in this, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no. It was a nice big ensemble cast. There's lots of different couples in here, and then a few, uh, a few of the uh, the people that work at the inn. So it was really nice to have such a a large cast of characters, and um, we we really connected on set. Uh, Ruby brought us all together. Ryan's hilarious. Brooke is so giving. 
Uh, and then the rest of us who are locals here, um, you know, Carmel and I, we produced a, a play that was uh, out of our, like an original play out of our home. And one night they all came together and, and bought tickets and, and, and came everyone. So it was nice to, uh, it, it felt nice to be supported like that. Um, usually a Christmas movie isn't filmed at Christmas. It's filmed at some, say, the summertime. Um, I had right. one recently who they actually had a home up. They had a Christmas movie and it was actually filmed in February. So was oh. this filmed in the winter months or was it filmed in summertime? This was kindly filmed in October over uh, kind of Canadian Thanksgiving. So uh, there wasn't snow on the ground, but uh, you're uh, when you're seeing someone in a Santa suit on a, on a Hallmark Christmas movie, they're likely in 35 degree weather. <laughs> uh, cooking under there so we felt fortunate that we got to dress appropriately for the weather definitely um how hard was it filming a christmas movie not actually well i say how hard is it filming a christmas movie it wasn't really filmed that christmas it was kind of filmed sort of like october when the decorations usually go up was it weird filming the, in october you know um it wasn't so much the the location we had was such a big beautiful uh mansion really that looked like a, a candy cane house uh so that brought us it looked like you could just take one big bite out of it uh so that brought us into that christmas spirit and and uh and that and there's like the mountains in the distance were nice and snow capped. So it didn't feel, thankfully it didn't feel too strange because it definitely can. It definitely, yeah. you could feel pretty out of place filming a Christmas movie in August. Yeah. Um, who was the most Christmassy person on site? Who was like, oh, I can't wait for Christmas. I can't wait for Christmas. <laughs> uh, Brooke. Brooke was, uh, she just, she just beams Christmas spirit. So oh, I would have to say Brooke. Yeah. I must have it on here at some point. I'll take, that, I'll, take that on, I'll take your advice. Yeah. Uh, in the interest of being a Christmas movie, uh, did the cast give presents to to uh, each other at some point? You know, the last day was shot at a specialty candy store, kind of like a British inspired candy store for your fans okay. over there. And uh, so we did happen to you know in between takes and setups we uh the the um the owner was there and we kind of took turns getting each other a little chocolate here a little candy here that we found cute and interesting uh -huh. that someone would like so that's how the uh the gift giving came about um you can only really consider it a christmas movie if michael buble is singing in the background so does buble sing in the background at some point in your movie i did not hear buble no Buble, I know, but there they did have a, a cameo from uh, a very acclaimed violinist, Lindsay Sterling. So she made an appearance, played, yeah. and uh, and that was uh, a big part of the movie. There uh, added to the magic of it all. Violinists are so underrated. Have you noticed? Pardon? Violinists are so underrated. It's like oh, oh yeah, absolutely. We'll have, a, we'll have a singer, but. Actually, I actually like violinists because obviously it's not like they're kind of like drummers in a sense because at some points they can they can do things quite quickly and you're like I don't know how they do it. I have no idea. Um, the way that I mean, it feels like your fingers would have to be tiny to play that thing. Yeah, uh, the notes are so close to each other, um, and their ability to to move the bow over like and connect with one string as it's it's. Uh, it's I play some bass and guitar myself, but uh violin seems mm. far beyond to, my pale. Not to mention the creak in the neck you'd have for your uh, that that too. It would be a heck of a physio appointment. Yeah. So for anyone who hasn't watched it yet, what can they expect from the movie? Give us a preview if you like. You know, it's it's a really sweet, heartwarming uh story of people coming together over Christmas and these, these innkeepers at this kind of magical place where they, they, they exist to, to put people back on, on the right path. Uh -huh. So it's, it's, it's very sweet that way. And the movie's out now on Hallmark. It is. It's out on Hallmark and I just searched it and it looks like it's on prime video as well, at least in Canada. So Ooh, I have Amazon prime. 
check it out. And the producer, actually, our producer, actually has Hallmark. She's got a Hallmark subscription, so I feel um, like yeah. I better go and tell her it's available. <laughs> it, it came out uh, December third on uh, on Hallmark in the U.S. And then I think it hit Canada on the Women's Network a day or two after that. So you know, they, they, they come hot and fast right now, the, the Hallmark Christmas movies in December. Oh, we definitely do. Um, a lot of actors and actresses move into animation or video games as voiceover or motion capture. I've had a few on. Uh, some include uh, Lily Rexu, who has done multiple Assassin's Creed games. Yeah. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Alex Horton Regan, sorry, sorry, Alex, I forgot your name. Who voiced Keanu Reeves' girlfriend in Cyberpunk 2077? Idris, speaking of which, Idris Elba has actually been confirmed for its DLC. And wow. uh, Martin Coppin, who has voiced Mozzie in Rainbow Six Siege and Lucas Riggs in last year's Call of Duty. So, is that a path you'd like to go down at some point if you haven't already? Funny enough, uh, since I was uh, about as old as I can remember, um, I've wanted to be a voice actor. So I got into acting because I wanted to be in voice acting. So I, I, I kind of took a, a different path, uh-huh. uh, the opposite road. And um, I had the, the pleasure of uh, playing a lead in Lego's Legends of Chima. Um, and that was a blast for three seasons there. Played Cragger and a number of other characters on that. So it was uh, really cool having my own like Saturday morning cartoon character. Uh, that was uh, certainly a, um, a childhood dream come true. Uh, I've gotten to play Thor uh, in uh, some Spider-Man cartoons, which is really cool to, you know, be part of the, in, in my own way, the Marvel universe there. Um, so, and uh, I've seen some, you know, plushies and stuffed, uh, stuffed Thor characters from that show passed around. Uh, I've done a number of video games. Uh, some I can think of right now, Warframe. There's a big one coming out next oh, yeah. year yeah i play uh, three different characters in warframe um and uh yeah so it's mocap hasn't something that hasn't been something that i've been able to get into yet but definitely something yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to um and yeah but voiceover is i love 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 it that's that's my that's my heart and soul yeah we'll have to get we'll have to get our voiceover on next time, and then you could you two can have a discussion about voiceover if you like. Sure, absolutely. We'll make it next year because he's doing theatre at the minute, so he's away from us for a bit. But he said he'll be back next year at some point, probably right. January, the uh, January when his theatre place finished. But either way, he is severely missed. Um, have you got anything coming up that you'd like to talk about that we haven't already discussed, or anything you yourself would like to personally promote? And if yeah, this, uh, I just you know, need to go back- Sorry, go ahead. Just need to grab my phone for the next bit. For sure. Right, I'm back. All righty. So have you got anything you'd like to uh, personally promote or plug? Uh, yeah, uh, Hallmark. Um, n- there's um, a series of movies called Nikki and Nora, where I play Detective Sanchez with uh, Hunter King. Uh, that was a Ooh. lot of fun. Uh, really, uh, uh, just a, a great murder mystery, classic kind of sleuth uh, sisters storyline. Uh, and I play, uh, you know, kind of a, a jerk of a detective standing in their way. Um, so that was fun. I kind of like playing the bad guy. And and for Hallmark, I actually got to pull out a gun. So that's pretty rare uh, in this universe. Um and then otherwise, I had the uh, the pleasure of playing my uh, my partner Carmel's husband again on a new movie coming out. And it just wrapped. It's called Field Day. Uh, that should be out in a couple months on Hallmark. And then um, there was another Hallmark movie that I, I did. I just wrapped up. And this was it was a little bit different. Um, more of a pulled on the heartstrings and gave me an opportunity to uh, flex more of my dramatic muscles. So I'm looking forward to that coming out. Nice. Um, I've got my phone, so but I am ready for the next question, which is, have you got any social media? I have got Instagram ready because Instagram is what I mainly use now. Yeah, that's me too. Uh, I'm uh, it, at It's David Attar. Ah, followed by Brittany Willisy, um, another final, former Final Cut uh, guest. Lovely oh, no lady. kidding. She is actually, she uh, she's an old, old friend of mine. We've known each other for about 15 years since she was about 18 years old. And uh, 
she's now my my girlfriend and I singing teacher. So she's oh, here in this room once a week, helping us learn to sing. Yeah. Oh, you give Brittany the best. It's been a while since I've. Uh, I actually have missed her. You know, I believe. Uh, don't quote me on this, but I actually believe she was the first person. She was the first guest to actually ask me questions on my uh, during one I of her, one of my interviews. So that would not that surprise me before. one bit. That would she not surprise. Four. Her kahunas yeah. are massive. So <laughs> that being said, I do miss Brittany. So are, we, are you ready for the Final Cut 2022 Christmas quiz? One of Let's the very last quizzes of this year. Ooh. Uh, right, here we go. <clears throat> you mm-hmm. are on a TV movie set. This is what I like to call Why Am I So Popular? Because you know how it is. You get offers left, right, and center, and you right. think, oh, God, what have I got to turn down? What have I got to accept? So you're five. You can only accept two of these, and it will be quite hard because they are all Hallmark actors or have been in Hallmark movies. One of them is actually who you just mentioned. So uh, your choice. This is your choices for actors and actresses to start in a Hallmark Channel Christmas movie with, and they are <clears throat> Hunter King, who you have just mentioned. So that puts the pressure on a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the producer's favorite actor, Jesse Metcalf. Ah. Yep. Uh, Robert Buckley, who actually replaced Jesse Metcalf in uh, Chesapeake Shores. I'm okay. so I'm really sad it's gone. I miss I miss it already. I know. I've, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Lacey, I believe. Sorry if I'm going to butcher her name wrong. Lacey Lacey Chabert, I believe that's how you pronounce okay. it. And the very last one is actually another former guest of mine, Stephen mm-hmm. Hazar. So I had such a great experience working with Hunter that I would gladly take it again. Um, so yeah, uh, I would, uh, that, that was a no brainer Hunter King, number one. And then I'd have to say Jesse Metcalf because I like a good jam and I hear he's a great musician. So yeah. I would, uh, I'd gladly say, Hey, let's, uh, let's rock out. Right. Oh, then, I could see, um, I, you know, like, t- you know, our, our time off between yeah. takes being a lot of fun. It probably would be. Right. So you're just going on subjects, but you are now followed by Final Cut Official on Instagram, sir. Woo. All right, then. Um, if you could name, I'm going to make this quick because we, are, this, we have not much time. What's on your Christmas playlist, music-wise? I got to say anything Buble. He no. just he's the spirit of Christmas, my friend. And the uh the uh the peanuts piano, uh what's his name? That album. The Peanuts Christmas, the Charlie Brown Christmas. Charlie Brown, yeah. Yeah, uh, I love that. I can actually one up I could probably do I could probably do better than that. I know I'm being a bit ambitious. Uh Slade, Merry Christmas. Who? Slade, uh Noddy Holder. Oh yeah, that's a good yeah. one. Nice. Yeah, that's on there. Paul McCartney's on there. Shaking Stevens is on there. Yeah. Uh, both band aids are on there. Great. Uh, I think what else there is. Uh, do you know what? I haven't even looked at my playlist for ages, but I only remember the one. Oh, yeah. The Pogues are on there. The oh, Christmas. the Pogues. Yes. The watered down version, not the, uh, the best version, I'm afraid. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> is your Christmas tree up yet? It is. Well, well, well. In it is. There's even gifts underneath it. We haven't. I haven't got gifts under my tree yet, but the tree is stacked, literally stacked nice. full of uh, decoration. All right. The last question, very quickly. Um, if you could cast eight people in a Christmas movie, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be Hallmark. It can be of your own idea. Um, who okay. would you cast? Actually, well, let me I, that. I'm going to say seven because the first thing you would do is cast onto King. As you already have said, you'd like to work with her. Of again. course. Yeah. Hunter <laughs> is in there. Absolutely. Um, would you I'm have say- Pardon? Would you have her sister, Joey King, in? You know, uh, I, I'd have to see her audition first. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So I'd, I'd cast Hunter. I'd okay. cast my girlfriend, Carmel. She's a phenomenal actress and she, She's great. Uh, just love working with her. I'd cast Ryan Reynolds because oh, no, he's not Nick in Vancouver. Reynolds. He's charming. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. Because my I would I need to meet Robert Downey Jr. I don't I can't leave the house without being told I look and sound like him. So I look forward to the day where I get to play his brother, son, whatever. 
Um, I would cast, I think I'd cast Snoop Dogg as Santa because that makes me laugh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ooh. Uh, Barbara Streisand Ooh. because, um, uh, sh- I mean, there's got to be a music number in there somewhere and let's make yeah. it memorable. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, the Rock. Dwayne and Johnson. I'm, pardon? You're casting Dwayne Johnson in the Christmas. I'm, tw- I'm casting and- Dwayne Johnson. Oh, there is one question. You, if you're casting Dwayne, you must cast Kevin Hart as well. Oh, of course. Yeah, and, they are and a load of apple boxes. Him. Yeah. Um. I well. I. I mean, considering you didn't give me a budget restraint, I feel I can no. have all of them. And the last one I would say, uh, just to make things interesting, is uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> What, Sonic yeah. the Hedgehog himself or Ben Schwartz who voices him? I'm going to say Sonic the Hedgehog himself. And it could be Ben Schwartz. I'm happy to have Ben Schwartz do the voiceover. Yeah. But, uh, Just remember, if you, don't, if you can't have Sonic, you can always have the voice of Sonic. There's always that's that. true. That's true. <laughs> right, so we have actually got a bit of time. I'll tell you who mine is. I would actually have Joey King, so snap. Oh, uh, okay. I... The thing is, I don't even think Joey and Hunter have done a movie together. So I would actually have both sisters in. Well, that's funny because when I did Nikki and Nora, um, they, I guess they could have cast her sister, but uh, they didn't. Yeah. It's always nice to have first, isn't it? Um, yeah. am I, am I, uh, this is probably going to sound, there's, there's a lot of females in this, but I do actually like a lot of uh, lady actors who don't really get... Um, we don't really get, I'll say, we don't get praised enough for the work. So, Anne Hathaway. Okay, I'm a big fan. Yeah. The only thing is, the thing is, I love Anne Hathaway. She's the only person who could sing a Kelly Clarkson song before Kelly Clarkson could even recognize her own song. <laughs> uh, Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. Reese Witherspoon. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, do I have Sharon? No, I can't have Sharon Stone. It's uh, it'd be too PG for what she for what she's used to anyway. Fair enough. Um, well, there's the new Violent Nights movie. I feel like Christmas movies are expanding a little bit. I tell you what, I do. Oh, I do like. I know it's not female, but I do love this guy, John Leguizamo. Oh yeah. He can. I tell you what, he can be the villain of the piece, and the other six can gang up on him. How's that? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm sorry this has had to be short, mate, but it's been a blast. No, no. And hopefully next year when Nathan's back, you and him can do a uh, can do an interview about the uh, joys and the perils of uh, voiceover work. I'd love that. I'd love I'll, that. And I'll put it in an email to him or when I'm, next time I see him. So Sounds sorry good. it's been short, mate, but thank you so much for coming on. So no, ladies, thank you, Dean, and uh, to all the fans, everyone listening. I uh, appreciate it. Hope you enjoy the movie, and uh, have a Merry Christmas, everyone. And you, sir. And on that, ladies and gentlemen, wishing you a Happy Christmas and definitely a Happy New Year. David Atal. Bye, everyone.